Hi, I'm Jacob Weidner. In this video, I'm going to show how to create effectors and how to work with all the basic effector settings and how to work with the plane effector. So before we start adding effectors, we've got to start out by create a cloner system. So we're going to pick the layer we want to clone, click add cloner, and uh, let's get 10 clones in this case and space them out a little bit. So that's our cloner settings that we're going to test this with. In order to add an effector now, everything you need to do is to click the big button that says add effector. And it's going to add an effector. As we can see in our layers, we now have an effector layer. Let's rename that. Instead of effector one, let's call it something like demo effector. And we can see now it says demo effector up here. If we wanted to, we can create more effectors. But right now, we're just going to work with this one. Below, you can see all the settings for the effector. And also, when the effector is selected, you can see all the animatable uh, settings for the effector in the effect controls panel. At the top over here, we have effector settings. And the plane effector actually only has one weight. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. And then below, it has all the properties that you can change with the effector. So position and scalar rotation and so forth. So we can go into position and change the Y position. And as we do that, we can see that nothing happens at all. The reason why nothing happens are down here at these eight buttons. If we wish to use the position with the effector, we need to switch on the position toggle. So we can do that just by clicking it. And now we can change the position of the clones using this parameter. Just the same if we wanted to change the scale, we would have to go down here and turn on scale. Right now it's not creating a very interesting animation because they're all going up or they're all going down. If we want to create something more interesting, we need to set a fall off. And we do that naturally down here, where it says fall off. We're going to start out by selecting the linear fall off. As soon as we do that, we can see that we get a linear fall off. The linear fall off is being put on to the effector layer. So if we select the effector layer, we can drag this linear fall off around. We could keyframe it. And in that way, we can do our animation. The fall off itself has settings. So again, if we look at the effectors controls, we can set the size of the fall off. And we can set the angle of the fall off. So right now, they're moving in from this side, and then they have been affected on the right side. If we set the angle to 180, it's then going to be the opposite, of course. Let's set this back to zero. And I think I'm going to move up all the clones a little bit, just to make them animate a little further. And with the effector, I'm going to turn up the position Y. And maybe make this a little wider. And put in some keyframes. So let us start over here. Press P and keyboard to show position. And keyframe that just as you normally would any layer. And we now have this animation of the clones being animated from top to bottom. 
What you might notice is that when they animate, they are animated linearly. So they will animate from top to bottom at a constant speed. Most cases, we don't want that. We want them to ease in one end or maybe both ends. We can do that by controlling the curve right here. So if we open up this, you might recognize all these. These are the basic uh, easing equations that Robert Penner created uh, many years ago. They're very useful for creating smoother animation. So if I select something like the sign, we can see that the curve is now a sine curve. So now they're going to be smoother. They're going to smooth, it starts slowly and then ends slowly too. We can also set it to something with even more curves like uh, cubic or maybe all the way up to expo. And now you can see we're getting a very different animation curve. Let's pause this for a second. Sometimes though, you don't want the to curve in both ends. And in order to control that, we have those two checkboxes down here, outside and inside. So if I switch off outside, it's only going to curve in the lower end. And just if I turn that back on and switch off inside, it's only going to curve at the top. So now that animation is going to look like it starts slowly and then falls down. I can do it the other way around. It's going to start quickly and then slow down at the end. We also have more fun curves like uh, elastic, for instance, which are going to give you this springy animation. Or we could select something like bounce. And it's going to look like they're going to fall down and bounce on the floor. So we can see that we have different kinds of curves. But what we also have is different kinds of falloffs. This is a linear falloff, which goes from one end to the other. We also have one called radial falloff. And the radial falloff is a circle. I'm just going to turn off all this animation, so I can just drag it around manually. As you can see with the radial falloff, it's going to affect everything that's inside the circle, as you probably already guessed. So we can change the radius of it. With the circle, we can also change the falloff. So if we set the falloff down, we can see that we're getting a smaller blue circle inside the purple circle. Maybe we want to set this to 50. That's going to mean that the falloff is only going to use 50% of the circle. Let's just turn the position Y down a little bit so they don't go that far. And let's change from the curve from bounce to sign. The clones that are inside the blue circle is going to be fully affected. The ones that are outside the pink circle are not going to be affected at all. And then everyone else in between. The last setting we have is invert falloff. So we could turn that on. And now it's basically going to be opposite so that everybody who's outside the circle is going to be fully affected and those inside are not going to be affected at all. Let's have a look at some of the other properties. Let's just turn on the outside again and turn off the position and gotta put them further down here. So the first one after the position is scale. So we're gonna turn that on. And in the settings, we can set how much it's going to scale. Right now we're scaling all of those outside of the circle, remember? So we can change that. 
so it's going to affect all of those inside the circle. Maybe we want them to squeeze together and then grow in the in the Y size. And let's turn down this photo off a little bit. So we will get an animation that looks like this. We can also take the scale X and put it all the way down to minus 100. That essentially is going to make the ones in the middle zero in scale X, which means that they are going to be invisible. And you can create a very interesting effect with that by inverting the fall off. Now when you drag across, they are only going to be visible inside the circle. I could also turn on rotation and go into rotation, change the rotation, and then they are also going to rotate as they appear and disappear. Orientation is pretty much the same as rotation, but only works for 3D. But anchor is a little bit special, and to show you a good case of that, I'm going to change the setup a little bit. So I'm going to turn off these scale and rotation parameters, and I'm going to go from having a linear to a radial. And maybe we want to resize this a little bit so it's not so big. If we turn on anchor and go into our settings under anchor and change the Y anchor, it's going to move them up and down, but it's going to move them up and down according to their own local axis. So because they are in this circle, they are now going to be, let's just not invert the fall off right now. They're going to go away from the center of the circle, which can create some very interesting effects. And then if you set it to a minus value, it will go towards the center. Right? So the anchor is very useful, especially when working with the radial cloner. Let's go back to the other setup we had. A linear, let's send, space them out a little bit. To look at the last tree we have here, I think I'm gonna use a linear fall off and I'm gonna make it a little wider and switch off the anchor, turn off position and instead of, have, of having them to go down, we want them to go up. So let's give it a minus value like that. And let's also keyframe this from one end to the other. So we just put in two keyframes and that is the entire animation. So this is pretty basic. We can now turn on this one, which is opacity. And we can control the opacity with this slider. It doesn't even have a group because it only has one, so it's just a slider. And if we set this down to minus 100, it's going to turn the opacity of those affected all the way down to zero. Which means that animation is now an animation of nothing, and then the clones are being animated in. That's pretty much everything there is to say about the opacity. So let's turn that off again. And let's have a look at color, which is the next one. If we turn that on, it's going to add color to the clone. Now, the default color it's going to add is white, so we can't really see anything happening. But if you go into the color setting and change the tint color to maybe a deep red, we can see that 
the ones that are being fully affected are then now being fully red, and the other ones are still white. In order to demonstrate the last property setting we have here, we need to have a different clone than this uh, square, because the square is a shape layer, and the last property is time remapping, and a shape layer cannot be time remapped. So we need to have something that has its own timeline that we can time remap. And I have a cross down here, which is a uh, composition. Looks like this, and if we tap into it, we can see that it's this amazing animation of a cross going down to being a dot. So really not very interesting right now, but it's a timeline, it's an animation. It goes from zero to 10 seconds. So this entire animation is 10 seconds long. We can use that as a clone. Let's try it. So we just select it and click use selected layers. And now we're gonna have those crosses instead. If we then turn on this time remapping feature and select our effector and go into time settings, we can say we have a start time and an end time. And the start time is whatever time it is outside of the effector. And the end time is outside the effector. So right now the end time is one second. And if we go into this animation, we can see that one second is here. We want it to go all the way to 10 seconds. So let's do that. Let's go in here and set instead of one, let's set it to 10. So now we're gonna see that not alone are they gonna be animated up and down, we also time remapping their internal animation. So we're going from dots to crosses. And if we want to, we can switch those around. So we could have top 10 at the top and zero at the bottom. And that would give us the opposite result. So they would start at 10 seconds and then go up the way up to zero seconds. Okay, so that was all the basic settings of the effectors in general and something about the plane effector and how to use that. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.